Hey guys, Ray from Lovey RV. So over the years I've reviewed a number of products from a company called Bouge RV. It seemed to be an online distributor of various things like solar panels, solar controllers, portable fridge freezers. I'll link back to my other posts. I've reviewed a couple of their solar panel offerings, fridge freezer, and uh, last year I did one of their solar controllers, an MPPT controller, a 40 amp one. Well, they have a newer version out now that has some uh, better uh, specs on it. It does a little bit more. It also has a built-in Bluetooth, so you can look on your phone and see all the data of the incoming charge and outgoing charge and do some of the setups right through your phone. So that's not too bad. And it has a, a digital display on it as well. So let's pull it out of the box and take a look at it. Not much in the box. There's the controller. This looks like a battery sensor, so if you have lead-acid battery, it can adjust the charge when the temperature gets cold. You need some higher voltages to charge lead-acid. I won't need to do that because I have lithium batteries, but it would just plug right in over there. And we got the owner's manual, and here we go. So it looks like it has a nice glass front on it and a digital readout. And here we have the inputs and outputs. Looks like it's got a telephone type cable, RS-485 cable. So you can hook different things into it, I guess a dongle or something. And then on the input we have PV, photovoltaic cell for your solar panels. And battery plus and minus. And that looks like probably they'll accept about a 6 gauge wire. On the back we got nice fins, so it feels fairly uh, hefty, mostly a metal case and glass front. So by that it doesn't need any sort of fan at all. It's got lots of heat sinking and ways to dissipate the heat. We've got something here, a little thing. Okay, that's for uh, doing your wiring. It's looked to be a little magnetic thing, so. That's kind of neat. Anyway, let's fire it up and give a quick test. I have some solar panels out there, so I've been using them to charge my RV. So I'll hook into here and we'll grab a battery and we'll see if we can uh, get the thing to uh, come up to its, its specs. For that, I'll just go through its specs for you. So let's have a quick look through the manual so I can show you the specs that uh, kind of set it apart from the version I had before. Go through blah, blah, blah. Okay, features aluminum shell, tempered glass cover, good heat dis dissipation. Okay, built-in BT communication, phone app, Android or iOS. So everything is built into this controller. The previous one I had to buy an external um, kind of dongle to get an to get an app or to get any kind of display with it. So that's one feature that sets it apart. It says filled with silicon polyurethane inside for better cooling and waterproofing. So yeah, this one states it's, uh, I think it was IP32 or 34 or something, which really is kind of like rain or splash resistant. But this is the big one that interests me. Compatible with lead acid batteries and lithium batteries supports 12, 24, 36, or 48 volt battery system. Um, the previous one, I think, supported 24 volt. Um, automatically identify voltage of lead acid. Backlit display on screen. Touch button operation. Um, with the app, I don't think you would use the screen that much. There's very kind of basic things on the touch button. It does uh, tells you voltage, temperature. There's an error code thing and and uh, and something else on it. So you'd mainly want to be using the app has uh, the typical built-in reverse connection protection, open circuit protection, high temperature protection, overcurrent short circuit protection. So it's basically uh, pretty hard to, to hurt this controller. Also has an 18-month warranty, so a little better than a lot of things on the market that come with a, a one-year warranty. Parts, uh, yeah, there's your display settings there. So not really a whole lot of stuff going on there. Um, this 100% battery state of charge, so on lithium, that's totally useless because the lithium voltage sets so sets up so high that it always basically says 100%, but it may be kind of useful on lead acid. It kind of give you a, kind of a, a kind of a 
basic look at what your state of charge is, but you wouldn't want to count on it. It's only measuring the voltage, not really t telling you exactly what the state of charge is. You'd need a shunt uh, battery monitor system to do that. Wiring, Let's see if we can get down to the specs here. Yeah, there's the app. It seems to work pretty good. It's pretty easy. It, it found it right away and hooked up, connected, no problem. And actually connects at a pretty good distance. I have it located in the front of my fifth wheel and right at the back I can still connect to it. There's your lead acid stages and then lithium stages. Error codes. Here we go here. Let's zoom in on this specs here. Yeah, so 150 volts maximum solar input voltage, which is good if you want to string a lot of panels together. You want a really high voltage, and that l limits the amount of wire diameter you need. So, you know, when I had my solar panels, I actually have about 100 feet of wire from the panels that are way out in the field to where I am in the trees. So by having the voltage up high, it, it lessens the amount of losses in the wiring. Also, it raises up quite high if you have different uh, battery voltages. So 600 is max for a 12 volt system, but then it can handle 1200 at 24 volt, 1800 at 36 volt, and 2400 at 48 volt. Um, I can't really test that right now, but I plan to when I get back to the RV park later at the start of summer here, I have actually four um, lithium batteries that I can string together in series and I have quite, a, I think I have enough panels to test this so I'm going to be doing some more torture testing on this thing to to see how it does. App, working temperatures, so negative 31 Fahrenheit all the way up to 113 Fahrenheit. There it is, IP34. And yeah, I looked that up and it says uh, kind of like if it's being splashed with with like a hose or rain, it can handle it. And then all your different battery types. And there also is a, a user a user setting. Something about default gel. I'll have to go in that and when I get more in depth in the next video, I'll, I'll look at what you can set in the user settings, dimensions, etc. Anyway, it looks like a pretty interesting controller. I thought I would test it because the price tag is about 149 and it's got quite a bit of features packed into it and also it's able to be expanded for quite uh, quite powerful systems. Before I install it into my trailer, I'm just going to do a max uh, wattage test. So I, out on the, the field there I have a thousand watts of panels and that equals around a hundred volts. I have a long wire that comes in by my trailer here and I've hooked up a little uh, test station. I have a battery there that's a lithium type battery. I have the panels into the controller and then right to the battery and I am getting pretty close to 40 amps. Um, on the app, I have the app hooked up and it's telling me that uh, current is being limited. So basically it's maxing out the controller and I'm getting over 500 watts of uh, power going in there. Usually somewhere between 500 and 520. So it seems to work okay. So I'm going to install it into my front bay. Just show you in here where I'm going to put it. You can see I have a couple controllers in here. Get out of the way, shop pack. Yeah, this was the original uh, Bouge RV one that I installed a little over a year ago and it's worked fine. I actually run two different controllers. If you're interested in my whole system, I did a video not too long ago explaining my convoluted system that's grown over the years. Anyway, this is an SRNE controller that I installed in the fall and they're both uh, set to the roof panels um, and they're, they're about a 500 and so watts coming into each other one each of them so i'm going to take out this one and install the brand new bouge rv one in its place so that i can test it over the summer there we go so the installation was pretty basic for me 
Here's the one I took out. It's actually a lot smaller than the one that went in. Uh, basically, this is installed. There's uh, four panels on the roof, two 170 uh, watt Bouge RV and two Renegies. They're all in parallel, so they come down. This is six gauge wire, and these did handle the six gauge wire, no problem. They just just snugly fit in there. I don't think you could go any larger. And then there's screws in there to tighten them up. And then I have another set of six gauge coming through a, a breaker here. Now this is a 40 amp breaker and it's and it has never actually popped with my other 40 amp controller. I don't think they quite get to 40 amps so it's been fine. I haven't had to move up into a 50 amp or anything like that. The 40 amp was from back when I had a 30 amp controller. And on the other side the solar panels coming down to the roof. Inside I have a, a basically a disconnect switch so when you when I connected this up first I turn on the power to the controller and then once it's it's connected then I go and connect my solar panels. So that's the the method you do. You don't want to do it the other way. They say it could harm the controller. I've actually by accident done it the other way on a few controllers and it's never been a problem, but that's the way they say to do it anyway. Also in this installation, I have some aluminum uh, square bar back here and I screw it to the back wall of this uh, storage, front storage compartment. So I just put that and I screw the controller to that. Adds a little bit more heat sink to it and moves it a bit away from the wall so there's more cooling at the back where the fins are. One thing I've noticed is this is a super bright LEDs. <laughs> kind of overly bright in my opinion. Anyway, if I can get a good angle here, I can show you their, their uh, there we go, their digital display. So like I say, it's showing 100%. My battery monitor inside the RV is showing 70%. So it's just being tricked by the voltage. And it's showing a 30 Celsius for the temperature. And E00, that's an error code readout. If there was a problem, you'd go to that. It would give you the code and you could look in the manual to see what went wrong. And then the voltage is showing 13.7 volts. <clears throat> right now I'm not getting very much charge coming through. We're still in the bush here, so it's kind of trickling through the, the treetops and kind of got an overcast, slightly overcast sky. So I'm going to have to wait um, another week or so. We're going to be back in the RV park where I have nothing above me and hopefully the sun will finally come out in BC and I can do some more in-depth testing of this. But I wanted to kind of get it installed and, and kind of start testing it for you. So stay tuned for that. I'll come back maybe in a few weeks and uh, we'll do some more in-depth testing of this new controller. So I think if it works out, it's going to be a, a pretty good deal. Until next time, Ray from loveyrv.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers, folks.